Hello, I'm Matu Jamir and you're watching Hornbill TV's Prime at Night, now news in details. Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman will be arriving in Nagaland tomorrow to inaugurate the three-day first corporate social responsibility and investment conclave at NBCC Convention Centre in Kohima. The Union Minister who will in the state for be in the state for three days will also participate in the investor and banker meet with a special focus on Nagaland. On the first day, the business, economy and social environment, a state overview will be presented by Chief Secretary Dialam. Experience of doing CSR in Nagaland by founder YouthNet Hikani Jakalu can say. Industry perspective by President Designate Confederation of Indian Industry R. Dinesh and Notice Regional perspective by NEC Secretary Moses Chalai. Speeches will be delivered by Union Finance Minister, Chief Minister Nipurio, Sanjay Malhotra, Secretary, Department of Financial Services, Government of India, and Ratesh Verma, Secretary, Ministry of Corporate Affairs, Government of India. The Chief Ministerial Level Talks for the second phase of Assam and Meghalaya border issue was held today at Janata Bhavan, Gohati Secretariat, Dispur in Assam. The meeting was held between Assam Chief Minister Manta Biswa Sarma and Meghalaya Chief Minister Konrad K. Sangma and high-ranking officers both from Meghalaya and Assam. During the meeting, the officials resolved to form regional committee to be headed by the Cabinet Minister both from Meghalaya and Assam and consultation with both the Chief Ministers. The meeting comes following the signing of Memorandum of Understanding between the two states and Union Home Minister Amit Shah for a permanent demarcation of border disputes of six areas of differences. In presence of Honorable Union Home Minister C. Amit Shah, on 29th March 2022, Assam and Meghalaya has signed a historical memorandum of understanding resolving six disputes out of the 12 dispute raised by government of Meghalaya in August 2011. Subsequent to that, Survey of India has started, has started the work of delineating the border. Because the flood work was initially slow, but now we feel that work will progress. Uh, and it will, uh, Survey of India will be able to delineate, delineate the border in that six disputed site according to the letter and spirit of the Memorandum of Understanding. Today, uh, Honorable CM Meghalaya visited Gohati. We have taken a decision that now we'll start work on the remaining six disputed sites. Basically from Meghalaya, uh, angle or on the Meghalaya side, these six disputed sites is in three districts. That is in the three districts of Meghalaya. So like last time, we have decided to create three regional committee, which will be headed by a cabinet minister from Assam, for the Assam regional committee. And from Meghalaya, one cabinet minister against one district or one regional committee and that committee will be notified by the government of Meghalaya. Within 15 days, government of Assam will notify our three regional committee and of course, government of Meghalaya will also notify the regional committees of their side within next 15 days. Areas of differences will be taken up in the second phase. We have decided today in this meeting that uh, within the next 15 days, these two state governments will form regional committees for the three areas, which is three districts. And in this, uh, uh, the respective uh, cabinet ministers from the respective states will be the chairpersons of these committees. Uh, we also decided that uh, since the Karbialong District Council is there in Block 1 and Block 2 and Khanduri and Visya, that uh, members from the district council of the uh, Karbi Long also will also be part of these committees. Uh, once the committees are formed, then accordingly uh, site visits, uh, public consultations 
consultation with stakeholders will start and we hope that the process will move forward and in a reasonable time we should be able to uh, complete the process for the next six locations also. Uh, we have also decided that as a goodwill gesture and a public confidence building measure, the Honorable Chief Minister of Assam and myself will be making visits to certain important locations like Block 1 and Block 2 in order to give the confidence to the people that both the state governments are committed. Police in Golpara district of Assam have arrested two imams for alleged links to the Al-Qaeda in Indian subcontinent and the Bangladesh-based terror outfit Ansarula Bangla Team ABT, police said on Sunday. The fresh arrests follow arrests of 23 persons, including a few from Bangladesh in the past four months across Assam for their alleged links to AQIS and ABT and for setting up jihadi sleeper cells. Golpara Superintendent of Police V.V. Rakesh Reddy said that they have arrested two Imams, Abdus Subang, 43 years, and Jalaluddin Sheikh, 49, on Saturday following inputs received of the arrest of Abab Sali, who also had jihadi links in July. According to police investigation, members of ABT were found using highly sophisticated technology to communicate, rarely using the phones for calls, and there was complete compartmentalization of different modules with members using several aliases. SP Reddy stated that the arrested were working as preachers in mosques as a cover-up job aimed to wage jihad against India and establish Sharia law. Several training camps were organized by these people, especially during COVID times, and were trained in trade craft, radicalization, indoctrination, gun training, and bomb making, added Reddy. We have got an input uh, last month, July 24, when we arrested Abbas Ali, who is also uh, has links with Jihadi element. Based on that interrogation, and uh, we have succeeded in getting catch of these two important players. They have direct connection with Barpeta and the Morigao modules of Jihadi elements in Assam. And both of them, during investigation, we got to know that they have some literature which is related to Jihadi material. And it is directly linked to Al Qaeda material. So we have searched their houses. In Abdul Subhan house, we have found incriminating evidences in terms of posters, books, materials and uh, some of the secret phones which they used to communicate and SIM cards also. And in Jalaluddin house we got some literature which is in Arabic. We are yet to identify whether it is linked with Al-Qaeda or any other terror group. And the main uh, allegation, the main uh, thing what they did is they gave logistic support to the uh, jihadi extremists who came here from Bangladesh. Right now they are under the radar of Assam police. They are absconding, those Bangladeshi nationalist uh, extremists, and they have been given shelter here in Golpara by these people, and they have helped in organizing Dharma Sabha events so that it can be a ground to have facilitation and have a meeting with all the players. And uh, we have found uh, logistic support being given by these people, and also recruiting new answers as sleeper cells in Golpara. So the direct funding and support has come from the absconding Bangladeshi extremists who are linked to AQIS, Al-Qaeda in Indian subcontinent. They are one, of, one person, Abdul Subhan, has uh, told that in 2018 he joined in Al-Qaeda as a member. And uh, Jalaluddin is very close. He is a relative of him also, as a brother. And he has helped in uh, giving shelter to them, organizing this Dharma Sabhas. And then also having the talent hunt where the new recruits can be identified and then developed as a sleeper cells. Earlier this month, Assam Chief Minister Manta Biswa Sarma claimed that the state has become a hotbed for Islamic fundamentalization and five jihadi modules with links to Al-Qaeda affiliated terror outfits in Bangladesh have been busted in the past four months. Principal of a reputed college in Silcha was arrested today for delaying in holding exam, distributing question papers and opening exam halls. Exam is being conducted for filling up vacancies of close to 30,000 for third and fourth grade government jobs throughout Assam. Deputy Commissioner Kachar Rohan Kumar Jha summoned Principal Siddhartha Sankar Nath for explanation on delaying exam. However, Nath, instead of accepting his fault, started arguing with the Deputy Commissioner, which infuriated him to lodge an FIR against him. Police quickly sprung into action and detained Nath for further interrogation. Amidst tight security, exams started today in Assam across 900 centres spreading 24 districts of the state. Mobile internet services will 
remain suspended around the examination centers during the exam hours to avert any untoward incident. Earlier this week, SM Chief Minister Manta Biswa Sarma held a virtual meeting with Deputy Commissioners and other stakeholders to ensure the smooth conduct of the exams. After Delhi Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia's jibe over the reports to look out circular against him and other accused. In the excise policy case, sources in the Central Bureau of Investigation have clarified that the LOC might be issued soon as the procedure to do so is underway. On Sunday, CBI sources informed that LOCs were issued against Manish Sisodia and 14 others in the excise policy scam. They later clarified that LOC is in process, not issued yet. It was a procedural matter that takes due to process to be followed before issuing it against any person. According to the sources, during the searches conducted at the premises of the accused persons on Friday, two accused were not found at the location and they remained untraceable. Although, summons have been issued to them to join the investigation into the matter. Earlier in the day after reports of LOC against him, Sisodia had tweeted an old video of Prime Minister Narendra Modi in which the PM as Gujarat Chief Minister was hitting out at the 10 Central Government and the Central Bureau of Investigation, CBI. Calling Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal as kingpin of the excise policy scam, PJP on Sunday said that handcuffs are getting close to him as nodes of corruption are being unraveled. The PJP also alleged that the roots of the excise policy scam lead to doorsteps of corrupt Kejriwal. Addressing a press conference at party national headquarters, PJP national spokesperson Gaurav Bhatia alleged when people were suffering during pandemic, Kejriwal was indulged in corruption. On the AAP's claim that the next Lok Sabha polls in 2024 will be a direct contest between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Kejwal Bhatia said, Everyone knows what happened in Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand and Goa polls. The public will give a reply to the AAP. Jo ek saal pehle Vidhan Sabha mein keh rahe ki bhrashta chari karne wale desh ke gaddar hai, to Arvind Kejriwal ji, ye vakt a gaya hai, कि भ्रष्टाचारी जो गद्दार हैं देश के उन गद्दारों को अपने मंत्रिमंडल से बाहर का रास्ता दिखाए पूरी उम्मीद है कि आप इस पर कोई सुनवाई नहीं करेंगे क्यों नहीं करेंगे क्योंकि आपके भी हाथ पूरी तरह उसमें रंगे हुए भ्रष्टाचार में भ्रष्टाचार के में दलदल में आप भी फंसे हुए हैं किंगपिन है आप सरगना है अरविंद केजरीवाल इस पूरी भ्रष्टाचार शराब के लिए जो भ्रष्टाचार किया दिल्ली के अंदर जो शराब माफियाओं के सहयोग उनके उनके साथ नरम बर्ताव किया है और उनको तमाम रियायतें दी हैं जब कांग्रेस के शासन में जांच एजेंसियों को पिंजरे का तोता बनाया था तब नहीं सोचा था आज जब जांच एजेंसी अपना काम करती हैं, भ्रष्टाचारियों को पकड़ती हैं, जनता का रुपया जो लूटा गया है वापस लाती हैं, तो कहा जाता है ये राजनीतिक द्वेष का मामला है। लुकआउट नोटिस क्यों जारी किया? एक ईमानदार जांच एजेंसी ईडी को इडियट बुलाई है, सीबीआई अपना काम कर रही है कि कुछ भी हो जाए इन कट्टर भागने नहीं देंगे कानूनी प्रक्रिया के तहत लुकआउट नोटिस करती है पूछा जाता है ये यहीं दिखाई दे रहे हैं क्यों किया क्योंकि कानून प्रक्रिया ये कहती है कि आप इस तरह से लुकआउट नोटिस जारी कर सकते हैं और इसलिए किया गया ये न्याय संगत है उचित है और देश में ये बदलना चाहिए कि अपनी जांच एजेंसियों पे सवाल उठाने के बजाय वो माइक अरविंद केजरीवाल के सामने रख के पूछा जाए ये बताओ घोटाला किया क्यों ये बताओ जनता का दुख जो तुम्हें हरना था वो हरने की बजाय तुम करोड़ों को घोटाला क्यों कर रहे 
The Central Bureau of Investigation on Friday raided different locations, including Deputy Chief Minister Mani Sisodia's residence in the national capital in connection with the irregularities in the Delhi government's now withdrawn excise policy 2021-22. In a jolt to the Congress ahead of assembly elections in Himachal Pradesh, its senior leader Anand Sharma on Sunday resigned from the chairmanship of the party's steering committee for the state. Sharma, in a letter to Congress President Sonia Gandhi, is learned to have said that his self-respect is not negotiable. And he has resigned from the post, sources said. Sharma, who is considered among the tallest leaders of Himachal Pradesh, has reportedly told the Congress President in his letter that his self-respect has been hurt as he has not been consulted or invited for any of the meetings of the party. The Congress is seeking to wrest power from the PJP in Himachal Pradesh in Assembly polls later, later this year. Sharma, who first contested assembly elections in 1982 and was given a Rajya Sabha ticket by the then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi in 1984, has been a Rajya Sabha member ever since and has occupied several key positions in the party. His resignation comes soon after another leader of the G23 grouping, Gulam Nabi Azad, resigned as chairman of the campaign committee in Jammu and Kashmir a few days ago. Sharma has told the Congress chief that he has been ignored in the consultation process. However, he told Gandhi that he will continue to campaign for the party candidates in the state. In a big boost to the Trinamul Congress, 25 people from different political parties of Tripura today joined the Trinamul Students' Council in the presence of MP Sushmita Dave and party workers. The new members were welcomed by MP Dave and Yuva Trinamul Congress Vice President Neil Kamal Shah. During the welcome program, Dave said that the Student Council Committee will be formed in the next few days. Education is a subject that is the backbone of the nation. It means 65 percent of the population is young. So when we look at Tripura, uh, I have to say that there are two aspects to uh, there are two aspects of education. One is the teachers, and the second is the students. In a state like Tripura, even teachers are agitating and even students are agitating. You cannot say teachers are happy but students are agitating. Or students are happy and teachers. Uh, are agitating. Both the key elements of our education system, system, teachers and students are both agitating in Tripura. It is shocking. Today, qualified teacher education minister is going to be a lot of people. But what is happening is that we are going to be a lot of people. We are going to be a lot of people. Former Minister Arun K. R. Opreti, member of Sikkim Legislative Assembly, filed his nomination to the office of the Speaker, Sikkim Legislative Assembly today. Chief Minister and SKM Party President Prem Singh Tamang and other cabinet ministers accompanied Upreti during the nomination filing. The nomination was proposed by the Sonam Lama, who is the Minister for Rural Development Department and Ekli Theatrical Department, seconded by Aditya Goli, member of Sikkim Legislative Assembly. The election for the office of the Speaker, SKM, will be held on 22nd August 2022 in accordance to Rule 7 of the Rules of Procedure and Conduct of Business in the Sikkim Legislative Assembly. No, this is not about any political development. This is a matter of political development. And with the party, we have to take someone to the government, to the government, to the government, to the government. This is a matter of the party. That's why we have thought that our Purva Mantri Arunopati Ji will be a place to go to the government, 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 to the government. موسیقی 
हमारा विधायक गण उपस्थित रहता है तो हम तो एक That's all we have for now. Keep watching on Bill TV.